Getting started with malware analysis or reverse engineering requires that you have the right tools, and nothing makes that easier than the Flare VM. In this video, I'll cover how you can get started building your own Flare VM analysis VM, and go from this fresh but boring installation of Windows to this ready-to-go reverse engineering powerhouse. Before we get started, please take a moment and hit that like and subscribe button. Comments are open as well, so let me know what you think of this video. Also, if you're looking for resources to help you get started learning reverse engineering or malware analysis, be sure to check out my site, thecyberyeti.com. Here you can find tons of useful resources to help you build your cybersecurity career, including on-demand content and projects on GitHub. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter to stay informed of my latest content and receive tips and tricks to excel at reverse engineering and malware analysis. Okay, our journey begins with the GitHub repo. Let's get started. The Flare VM is intended to be installed in a virtual machine only, and that virtual machine has some requirements to satisfy. Mainly, the version of Windows, having a more recent version of PowerShell installed, and one that is pretty important, enough disk space, at least 60 gigabytes and at least two gigabytes of memory. The installation will check to make sure that you have the disk space available, but if you somehow find your way around that, what can happen is you can run out of disk space during the installation, and it is a little bit of a lengthy installation, so that can be a tad frustrating. We also have some pre-installation tasks to complete. First, of course, you need to have a Windows VM. Unfortunately, the Flare VM cannot provide you with that image, so that's really up to you. There's a link provided here where you can get a Windows 10 ISO from Microsoft and build from that. This is unlike other security distributions, such as Remnix or Kali. Since those run on Linux, licensing isn't such an issue. Once we have that VM set up, we need to disable Windows updates and disable tamper protection. I found it easiest to follow directions at the two links provided here. The first link to disable automatic updates provides a couple of different options. However, the first option is only temporary and allows you to pause your updates for seven days. That means they'll eventually turn back on. The second option uses group policy. I have found this to be the better option and equally as easy to apply. All you need to do is open up GC, all you need to do is open up GP edit, then navigate to computer configuration, administrative templates, windows components, windows update, double click on configure automatic updates, and then select disabled. Once you're done, click okay. The next step is to disable tamper protection and any anti-malware solution. There's actually two options here if we follow this link that we're going to want to complete. First is to disable real-time protection, and then the second is to disable Microsoft Defender, or your antivirus solution. If you have something else installed on the VM, you'll want to disable that. This installation path assumes a default installation of Windows, which has Defender enabled by default. Once those changes are applied, you might need to restart the system. Okay, so we've met the prerequisites, we've done the pre-installation tasks, now we're ready for our installation. All we need to do now is follow these commands as seen here in the installation instructions. We'll open up a PowerShell prompt as an administrator. You can do that by searching for PowerShell and then selecting Run as Administrator. And then I'm just going to copy and paste these commands into that PowerShell prompt. This first command should download the install script to your user's desktop. As you can see, we have install.ps1 on this user's desktop. Next, we need to unblock the file. And finally, we need to set the execution policy to unrestricted. The last step is to run the installation script, install.ps1. As you see, when the installation script begins, it's going to perform a number of checks. Not just making sure that there are enough system resources, such as enough disk space, but also a few other items to make sure the installation... Once the installation script has performed all of those prerequisite checks, it prompts you to make sure that you've actually taken a pre-installation snapshot. I would highly encourage you to do so. You'll be able to revert back to a state of this VM right before the installation started hopefully making any reattempts go a little bit smoother. Now, be forewarned, the installation here can take some time. In fact, the last time I tried to install, it ran for a couple of hours. So grab a cup of coffee, maybe a nice cup of tea, and sit back and relax and wait for this installation to complete. 
there's a lot of utilities that have to be downloaded and a lot of changes to this operating system that have to take place. The Flare VM scripts do not only install tools, but it also changes many core components about the operating system. Trying to do things like quieting network traffic and removing some of the bloatware that comes with Windows by default. With any luck though, your installation script will finish and you'll have that Flare VM ready to go. So let's let the installation do its thing. Once the installation script is done, you'll get a dialog informing you of the success of this installation. This means that you're ready to go. I would now consider taking one more snapshot and making this your new, clean baseline for your analysis VM. You also have a log file that you can peruse just in case you wanted to make sure there were no issues during installation with any of the tools. If you want to start exploring, all of the tools are going to be organized in the tools folder on your desktop. And you can see that these tools will be further categorized by their purpose. This video was to focus just on the installation though, so I'm going to save exploring these tools for a later time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until then, you have one of the nicest reverse engineering and malware analysis centric Windows-based systems out there. Hope you enjoy it.